For 49 years, sailors have made their way across the treacherous Bass Strait, continuing south where the uninterrupted Southern Ocean swell thrashes the wild west coast of Tasmania. They will sail below 40 degrees south into what is known as the Roaring Forties, where nothing but the world's largest waves and icy cold waters separates these brave souls from Antarctica. It's all part of the Melbourne to Hobart West Coaster Race. This year, being the 50th anniversary of the race, we thought, screw it, why not? You couldn't have asked for a more picture-perfect day for the start of the 77th Sydney Hobart Yacht Race. Most of you would know of the Sydney to Hobart race, which has been running for quite a few years longer, attracting vast media coverage and major sponsors, which entice the fastest and largest monohulls in the world to contest. Flailing rivals meant Law Connect was able to grab the lead out of the heads. While the Sydney to Hobart and Melbourne to Hobart races depart only one day apart, the Melbourne to Hobart West Coaster was never founded to compete against the Sydney to Hobart, but to complement it and provide an alternative race. It takes competitors into Bass Strait, passing King Island, then down the west coast of Tasmania. Sailors then turn east at Southwest Cape, keeping Matsika Island to the north before then negotiating the fluky winds of Storm Bay. We are so, 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 so close. They will pass the Iron Pot to arrive 435 nautical miles later in the heart of Hobart, where sailors from both the Sydney to Hobart and Melbourne to Hobart race join in the celebration of conquering the Southern Ocean. Our trip looks like we will get to experience the Southern Ocean in all of her moods. From sunshine and spinnakers to a triple reefed main. Beautiful day in Tassie. Beautiful day! Cruising down the west coast. And it seems to be just our luck that whatever bearing we're steering to, the wind's always trying to creep onto our nose. We've been beating into like 20, 20 plus knots. The angle's just improved though, so it's looking like we may actually yeah, get where we need to go and then we'll beat our way up on into Hobart once we round the corner. So we've taken a break from the warm waters of Northern Australia and made our way down to Melbourne where this race is kicking off. Working, studying and living on our boat Nakama can sometimes be a logistical nightmare when planning our life off the boat, especially with our cat Chili. <laughs> I've opted for the car mode of transport, taking the scenic route to stop in on my brother, who lives at the base of Victoria's tallest mountain, which of course he dragged me to the top of. Snow for years. Oh my god, Ollie! <laughs> really testing fate there with that drop. <laughs> oh, left-handed throw. <sighs> Perfect. We just made it to the highest mountain in Victoria. <laughs> I told Ollie I was going to do this last night and he said that he was going to cringe so hard. So <laughs> I had to do it. This is so cool. Look at this. <laughs> Slim had a bit more on his plate and arrived in Melbourne via the slightly more time efficient plane method of travel. However, we weren't the only crew members making the journey south. Aboard Fika, the Nyad 490 will be eight of us. Skippering the lot of us is my mum, Annette. What are we trying to do? <laughs> Get to Hobart. <laughs> First mate, or sometimes known as the captain's bitch, is my dad, Jerry. <laughs> New to ocean sailing is my auntie, Mary Jane, who is stepping out of her comfort zone and joining the crew. Fordecky is Sue, 
You may also recognize Sue from some previous episodes. As a marine trimmer, Sue helped us make Nakama's flashy new boom bag and dodger. This is Deb, super yacht extraordinaire and good energy manager. This is Emma, our enthusiastic Swede on board. And of course, there's us, Slim and So. Now, just real quick, before we get to involved, we thought we'd show you around the boat for you to get an idea of the crew sleeping situation and some more general things about the boat. So, Fika is a Nyad 490, or as our Swedish crew member informs us, It is pronounced Nyad. Starting on the foredeck, she has a Genoa and a Stasel. This makes tacking a little tricky, so you'll see one of us on the foredeck feeding the Genoa through. The mast is a whopping 21 meters high and reefs two to three are done at the base of it while you nestle into the granny bars. We call these granny bars because I assume they look like, you know, one of those granny yeah. bar things. In the cockpit, you will find a steering wheel where one of us will be at all times as we're not allowed to use the autopilot. There are three electric winches on the boat and on this beautifully varnished dashboard, you'll find most of the instruments. Now, although Fika is 49 feet, there are eight of us on board, so it's still going to be a little squishy. Downstairs, you're greeted by the saloon area, where one person will call bed. Up forward, you've got the V-berth, where Slim and I will be sleeping. It is also a completely watertight compartment, meaning the bow could shear off and the boat would stay afloat by closing this submarine-looking door. The next cabin is what we call the cubby cabin because it's sort of like a cupboard. There are two bunks in here where another two crew members will sleep. One of the two heads is across the corridor. In here is a loo and shower. En route to the aft cabin, you'll find the galley and a small door that leads you to the engine room. The aft cabin is probably what wins most people over when purchasing a boat like this. A huge square bed will accommodate the rest of the crew. With a lee cloth to divide the bed, two crew members will sleep here, with one side supporting a hot bunking situation, as when the skipper is up, the first mate will be down and vice versa. The second head you'll also find in the aft cabin as an ensuite. Now that's the basics of the boat and crew quarters for you. Once in Melbourne, getting to the start line of the Melbourne to Hobart West Coaster involves a traditional day race called the Cock of the Bay, which takes you from Melbourne City to the start line of the West Coaster. It's a classic race in its own right, but for us, never having sailed as a team before, nor having much experience aboard Fika, it provided a perfect shakedown sail opportunity. This was also Slim's first ever yacht race. What's the race tactics? Never raced before. Swoop in. Not getting anyone's way and try to not mess up my job. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the main guy. The main guy on the boat. Nah. <laughs> nah, I'm doing the main sail. Yeah. It's a mix of exciting and completely nerve wracking. There's so many boats weaving in and out, it's just complete and utter chaos. I've never done anything like this. Heaps of really, really racy boats out here. Eh? We get a microwave for coffee, like we might rock up a little bit later, but at least we'll have a hot shower and plenty of <laughs> nice meals and stuff on the way. <laughs> Sitting on our little leather couches in our mahogany living room, so you know, whatever. We might be late, but we'll do it in style. So we started a few minutes ago and we're just creeping up on the start line. Um, doing pretty good, aren't we? We are doing pretty good. <laughs> uh, I think so. I think it's about seven knots of breeze, we're doing 3.6. 4.8. 4.8. Oh, no, that's meters. <laughs> That's really like 3.7. <laughs> Let's I, go with meters. I, I read the wrong screen. I was like, whoa, 4.8. We're doing 4.8 meters. That's our, that's our race record so far. <laughs> the wind slowly built and we were hooning along before we knew it. 21 nautical miles later, we tacked through the finish line, managing to place ourselves just a little bit before last. So the race is over, we finished the race. We didn't win. Today was a warm up, it was good for all the crew because we've never sailed this thing together like this. Me and Sophie have never been really on a lean on this boat before. Uh, the only thing that's well, been tilting has been like our champagne glasses, I guess. We can so, 
As the cock of the bay race came to an end and the day fleet turned home, the remaining boats awaited the morning for the start of the 50th anniversary Melbourne to Hobart West Coaster. We are here in Blair Gary, a little town, not a town, it's a suburb of Melbourne in Victoria, Australia, and we are about to set sail on the 50th Melbourne to Hobart. I think there's 49 other boats in the race with us today. Sydney to Hobart's already left, but we are going a little bit later down the west coast of Tassie, across the bottom, and still we're gonna arrive in the same place, Hobart. Me and Sophie are gonna be racers by the end of this. So there's a little bit of chaos on the boat this morning. We've just had brekkie, we're trying to clean up, and we're just about to push out. We've got some exciting things on today. We have to do a sail by and then we're heading towards the start line and pushing out into Bass Strait. I can't tell you what the weather's doing just yet, but we'll get into that in a little bit. So. How are you, Skipper? Now we're good, we're everyone's on board though, and we're all really excited. Yeah. It's a beautiful <laughs> sunny day and we've got yeah. not only winds today, so we're gonna have a beautiful kite run across Bass Strait before um, a cold front hits us to sometime tomorrow. There's your weather report for you. <laughs> That's why she's on the big box, eh? Hey? Welcome to our crazy, crazy family. MJ is just keeping us alive, like collision avoidance systems. Everyone's got these AISs and these technological hectic charts, satellite chart plot and stuff. We've got MJ on the bow with a giant red trumpet. You cannot beat the old, you can't beat the classics. No batteries needed, no nothing. You've got to give her a coffee and a meal occasionally. Other than that, whack her on the bow, strap her to the mast and... There's a small fishing vessel on starboard. <laughs> so we've just had a little safety briefing, now we need to do the sail by. If I didn't really mention it before, the sail by is to go past the founder of the race. He's 94 years old and we all have to raise our hats to him and cheer, maybe bow, I don't know. But um, yes, that's what we're doing right now. We're all forming the line and we're following the leading boat. Three cheers, Sir Donald! Hip it! Hip it! Hip it! Alright, Maine is up. We are coming close to the start line. It's 25 minutes away. We're probably going to throw the spinning cart. There is no wind at all. There's about four knots. So figure being 20 tons is not going to move so well, but that's all right. We're in it for not the podium. That's all what we've agreed on. We're not in it for the podium. We are in it for, for the adventure. For the adventure. <laughs> We have started 435 miles to Hobart down the west coast of Tasmania. There's boats everywhere, there's no wind, so we're not going very quickly. We've thrown the asymmetrical and we're doing 2.6 knots. She's a ripper. The first challenge of the race after crossing the start line is to get out of the heads of Port Phillip Bay which on a bad day is considered one of the world's most treacherous sea passages. This two kilometer wide entrance can be extremely wild with ripping currents. Our task is to make it into Bass Strait before the tide turns against us. If we miss this opportunity, we may get stuck in the tidal stream for hours. 
and boats just a bit further behind us did get stuck for hours. All right, we're heading out the heads of Port Phillip Bay. We're about to enter Bass Strait with a fair bit of pace behind us. We're doing 3.3 knots. The boat that's just about to overtake us actually is the only other vessel I've done this stretch of water on. It's called the Spirit of Tasmania. It's like a giant, enormous car ferry that goes between here and Tassie. So I have done this before, but this is gonna be a very, very different trip. Done. Given we've never all sailed before, given we've never all put a card up before, everyone's done an amazing job. So and we've done. Oh my gosh. I think this is the closest we've ever come to a ship before. Yeah, you can hold the wheel or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the watches have begun. I think almost everyone, bar a few, have had their first little nap now. Me and Soph both have. Soph's helming us along at between eight and nine knots at the moment. We're sitting on about just under 20 knots of wind. Cruising along really nicely at the moment. And Still trying to get used to the fact that it's probably like 7.30 or something and that sun's still pretty high in the sky. But yeah, so far so good. We're just admiring him, stoked face, just stoked. <laughs> We're just back straight. I mean, it's pretty stoke worthy. <laughs> back straight, eh? Hopefully, we see an albatross or something soon. Seen a few dolphins. I'm hoping for like a seal or a whale or an albatross or something as we get closer to Tassie. Yes, that's what I'm hoping. The night took us across Bass Strait, and in the early hours of the morning, we officially hit the west coast of Tasmania. The Southern Ocean greeted us with a warm welcome of a cold front. Just woken up. I think we've just hit the west coast. Oh, there's a big one. Yep, go for it. Yep. Let's try to get the wind. There we go.
everyone. It is a beautiful day in Tasmania. We are in Tasmania. We're just running along the beginning stretches of the western coastline and we are greeted with a warm welcome. It's a beautiful morning. <laughs> beautiful day in Tassie. Beautiful day. Cruising down the west coast. <sighs> oh no, this Queensland thing is a bit overrated. Yeah, who, who, who would go to Queensland? Queensland? Do this? Uh, that's it. <laughs> Sun, <laughs> coral, warm water, <laughs> champagne, champagne, flat seas. But this is more thrilling. <laughs> How are you, MJ? I am great. I feel alive with this beautiful gusty wind yeah. straight off the Southern Ocean. Have you had a nice salt shower? This I've morning? had a nice salt shower, and um, I'm feeling great. That's good. <laughs> yeah. And what about you, Deb? I'm uh, feeling pretty damn good actually. I uh, just cleaned my teeth. I cleaned your teeth. So I feel like a million bucks. <laughs> you look it too. I don't know how you stay looking so good. <laughs> Takes work. <laughs> we have a little cluster of boats around us. We've all sort of like con con conjoined, emerged, converged, converged. converged. <laughs> Words and things are not good at. <laughs> Oh, through the night and you can see a couple of boats around us. It's nice to have a bit of company, you know, not alone out here in the wilderness. So while I got a bit hectic earlier, just went running just with the stay sail and three reefs in the main. It's calmed down a little bit now. So we've gone back to just putting out a bit of the headsail. The stay sail's gone away. And we're still rolling along with three reefs in the main. And um, we're starting to notice we've got quite a few like seabirds and stuff around, which is pretty cool. Sailing into the Roaring Forties, you are reminded of the little land there is to the west. On average, the largest waves are consistently found in the Southern Ocean, mostly due to the wind and swell being completely unobstructed by land in its entire 11,000 nautical mile journey around the bottom of the globe. Heading further south, feelings of vulnerability arise, but the spirits are high aboard Fika with Emma incrementally delivering Christmas presents. <laughs> you look very glamorous. <laughs> and Deb demonstrating how good she is at eating without any hands. And free. Yes, it's all the seabirds. We're about 200 miles in. Tassie's starting to look pretty clear on our port side. You can actually get a glimpse. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> you can get a glimpse of the mainland. Um, notable things so far to tell you. 200 miles in. Oh, I said that. 200 miles in. There was in. a mayday call and we missed oh, it. Oh, there was a mayday call but we missed it. So don't be mayday in around us. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're fine now, they, are, they sprung a leak. I think they're gonna head into the nearest safe harbor. We missed it because we were asleep, hey? Yeah. Yeah, like the, the, our crew didn't miss it. And they, were, they divided it to a inverted course and everything, but they've got it under control. So we'll keep you updated on that. When you get sprayed, it feels like ice on your face with the wind. The wind is like so bitterly cold, but it's not Antarctic just yet, it's still warm. The sunshine's actually been out most of the day today, which has been nice. It's just that breeze and that spray when it's on you that gets pretty cold. We 
We've got some beautiful dolphins swimming with us and they're having a ball in the waves. What's second at dinner? Well, it was on your ball. It's super yum. Mm. The wind progressively dropped off as the sun fell beyond the horizon. We shook out our last remaining reefs, put away the staysail and brought out the headsail. We took advantage of a small bit of internet and downloaded the weather report. And we are disappointed to find out that the wind will be completely dying off before it builds again and turns onto our nose. like to make our 41 degree declaration over. Vika complies uh, with all of the requirements of sailing instructions and we need to continue racing over. Mom was just... <laughs> I have one complaint about Vika and that she is very creaky. <laughs> so every evening we have to report our position now they're called skeds, as well as the 41 degree declaration to state that we are complying by race rules and that we are wanting to continue racing. Oh, that was a big one. Oh. The sun is up. Work we left midday, Tuesday. It's now very early in the morning on Thursday. There's a boat just coming up on our starboard side. It's been trying to catch us for a while, but just, just, just staying ahead at this stage. It's been pretty, real, when I say pretty, really, really variable light winds for the last like two hours. It dropped off almost completely for a while, but we've got a, we've got a bit back now. And we're sort of just pondering different thought processes as to what the best tactic from here on out will be as I think the wind's meant to be a little bit like this, unfortunately, today. The 20 tonnes of Fika threw on the brakes as the wind eased, and a steady stream of lighter boats with their light wind sails overtook us. We were left to flog in this Southern Ocean swell. We have been left with absolutely no wind and very yuck swell, so we're just flogging all over the shop and doing about 0.6 of a knot, but we don't know if that's forwards or backwards. We're all good though, because we've got enough mushroom suit to be out here for a week. I'm gonna put a couple of reefs in the main just to stop it flogging itself to the tatters very different story out here today than it was yesterday. Those reefs have stopped the main flogging so much which is nice. It's nice not to hear such a big flog because if anyone's been in the situation without wind it's not the no wind that gets you it's the flogging of the sails that is severely irritating. While we're not making tracks very quickly, we just want to say a massive thank you to Insta360, who has enabled us to get shots like this, and this. We were so stoked when our Insta360 arrived in time so we could capture all angles of action on this trip. We knew it would be a welcome addition to our camera family, but the shots we've been capturing are absolutely exceeding our expectations. Our personal favourite is the handheld drone position. You wouldn't believe me, but they will somehow magically get rid of the stick I'm holding because it's magic. And then you'll somehow see probably the whole boat and I'll just be standing here like I'm with my hand in the egg on. Yeah! But really I'm holding the camera. Little magic camera. 
If you're interested in getting yourself a magic camera on a stick for you too to capture every angle of action, check out the link in the description below. We may earn a little bonus from your purchase, which helps us to continue creating. Now I don't have to be so stressed about the drone all the time, I just have to stand here with my arm out the window. Are we moving? Yeah. <laughs> we, are. we are moving. We're moving. I don't know where we're moving to, but who cares? <laughs> we're going. So the wind gods have come to our call. <laughs> it's almost like if I lean forward, it helps you. <laughs> anyway, so it worked. We're actually floating in a direction now, and we're going there at about four knots. So it's life's good. Clearly, these voiceovers are getting more and more mundane by the <laughs> one because I'm tired. The enthusiasm at the start of the episode is probably going to be like, it's not that we're not still enthusiastic. We're just kind of sleep deprived. Yeah, it's about 50 miles to the southwest Cape, which is where we turn east towards Hobart. And at the rate we're going, it was looking like we we're going to be there in 24 hours, but hopefully that's, we can cut that time down a little bit. <laughs> we, were, we were getting to the point, we are wondering whether we'd, we'd get the breeze first or whether we'd have to start contemplating turning the engine on because we we're drifting, slowly drifting towards some rocks off the coast. <laughs> So we're wondering what would come first, whether we'd have to like retire and turn the engine on or a breeze would come and save the day. And it looks like the breeze so far has come and saved the day. <laughs> what do you say? I said, how are those mountains? What? But I said it like this, I was like, how's those mountains? What? Playing a bit of a zigzagging game at the moment, trying to get around this southwest cape. There's two other boats doing exactly the same thing as us, zigzagging along, and we can't quite, we just can't quite make make the corner. Although we can't quite make our course, we are lapping up this spectacular coastline as we zig towards the coast and then zag back out to sea. This area of the world is only accessible by a small plane or boat, which makes you feel pretty lucky to witness such wilderness. It's wild out here, like really just wild country. It's just us and heaps of birds and some mountains. But everything's like being licked by the weather, I guess. It's raw, it's wild. They're the two words to describe it. Raw, wild, birds. Albatross. Although there is a fair few boats out here doing this race, but you're out in the middle of the ocean, you've done all these miles, you always nearly run into each other. So that was pretty close, but it was nice. We could wave to each other and say hi. Did they wave back? Yeah, they were. Didn't you see them? No. Oh, yeah, yeah, they wave back. That's but it's just, you're out in the middle of the ocean, there's nothing but seabirds, and then you always just end up like on a collision course with another boat. It's just, I don't know how it happens, but <laughs> sometimes it's a little bit like he's serious. But it's nice <laughs> yeah, it's nice to see boats, just, yeah, it's funny. <laughs>
we spotted a seal but we're trying to find it again but it's pretty calm so we're just looking for splashes because it was there it is we have also officially turned the corner of Southwest Cape and we're doing very slow sailing <laughs> towards Hobart. To be repetitively becalmed, I suppose, was something we were expecting, but just hoped the wind might have just maybe changed for us. At this point, we feel like we're giving you a West Coast tour of Tasmania with a side of competitive drifting. We have a little seal following along behind us playing in the little bubble stream. You can see <laughs> he's having the time of his life. A bit of breeze came through and we saw our rivals who have been sailing in close proximity to us since yesterday afternoon throw up their MPS and start to take off, rapidly closing the gap between us again. We thought we couldn't just stand there and do nothing, so we attempted to fly the asymmetrical, which was the closest thing we had to their all-rounder light wind sail. but it just could not compete for the wind angle we had and they overtook us. Getting the spinnaker back in. Point five. They don't lock that in as our new land speed. It's like, what are you cruising along at? I'm just five point five at times. It's like I wouldn't say we're averaging it, but we're hitting it. Five point five. As predicted, the next bit of wind that came in was from exactly where we need to go, and before we knew it, we were beating into twenty knots of wind, and once again zigzagging along the coast. Things go from chill to a hundred very quickly out here. It's coming back. It's a media helicopter. <laughs> what? It's a media helicopter. What did you say, Skip? A media helicopter? <laughs> Racing, I can tell you that now. <laughs> we're we're just gonna get to Hobart, <laughs> and I reckon we're gonna be there maybe tomorrow afternoon at our current rate of progress. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Another bloody night on board yeah. sailing. We're probably got still at, I don't know, probably 70 nautical miles left to go, and they're probably gonna be the most challenging. We're down to two reefs in the staysail and going along really comfortably at the moment. So, Fika does not slam, so she's pretty comfy. She doesn't slam. She knows slam. Have you been in the forward cabin? <laughs> that was a big one. Oh. Well, in the aft on suite <laughs> cabin, the master cabin, she doesn't slam. <laughs> so Simon and I are in the front cabin, the forward cabin, and we're literally getting airborne at the moment. And yes, she does slam. <laughs> <laughs> and both of us are both slamming into the wall together like this as she goes like this. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm 
going into evening four. Don't let the light fool you at seven o'clock. So while the wind was epic across Bass Strait, it's been pretty testing ever since we got to Tasmania. It's sort of died out on us for the last couple of days and now we've been beating into like 20, 20 plus knots for the last few hours, I guess. The angle's just improved though, so it's looking like we may actually, yeah, get where we need to go and then we'll beat our way up on into Hobart once we round the corner. Slowly but surely. We are so, 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 so close. We're like, I think we're within 30 miles, like less than 30 miles of the finish line. And it is just a glass out. <laughs> we were doing really well for a while this morning. Cruising along at like eight to nine knots for about 10 miles. Did 10 miles real, real quick. And now we're just in this lovely little bay. It's nice to not have swell for a while. I'm actually, Coming off watch in about half an hour, I might be able to sleep without feeling like I'm in a zero gravity chamber. I just woke up after four nights we are slowly slowly making our way towards Hobart we're getting there slowly and it's gonna happen today probably <laughs> oh my god I need a shower so badly thank god you can't smell through this camera <laughs> Twelve nautical miles to go. Oh my! What? We're just passing the iron pot. We are officially on the home stretch to the finish line. <laughs> Ready? Yeah. We're on. It's the end of the race. We're tired, but we figured we don't want to end this thing by not showing you the end of this, this thing. We are tacking towards the finish line. We've turned the water maker on. Everyone's having showers because we're going to land in a hot flurry in order to make it to the bar in time. Because I'm not going to say that we're coming in late, but we're coming in like on the tail end of what is fashionable. We have just completely parked up. We are moving along at a whopping 0.5 knots. Six hours to the finish line at this rate. Finish the race with the spinnaker, eh? Kind of dry it. Just drying it out. It's very wet, so we want to air dry it. Yeah. Good day for a sail. Good day for a sail. <laughs> We're in under an hour at the moment if all goes well. Oh yeah. 
That's the start. Is there anything more satisfying than a spinnaker filling in light wind? We've sailed 430-ish miles to be here at the finish line. We're cruising towards the end of this thing at about two-ish knots. We've got about just under two miles to go. The roaring 40s were somewhat like the dwindling 10s. I think we covered about as many miles in the first night as we did in the last three days. But what an experience it's been. We've got eyes on the finish line. Hey, everyone be careful of the jibes. There's this suspenseful moment before crossing a finish line, especially approaching so slowly. We crept between the two finish line boys and waited for that horn to tell us we've just completed the 50th Melbourne to Hobart West Coaster. Just like that, eh? Just like that. We have crossed the line. Good job, everyone. Beer o'clock! <laughs> We're going to take you into Constitution Dock. Yep. So, obviously, these are all the Sydney to Hobart boats, and they're massive. <laughs> Sorry? We got the participants medal. For the, the competitors. <laughs> <laughs> One, two, three! Thank you. Oh, so good to have you guys on board. <laughs> Best thing. Oh, oh shit. That's good. We're in Tassie now. We have a presentation to go to, folks. Sunburn. We've had a couple of beers and being sunburnt and a little bit sleep deprived, it's gone straight to the head. But we've got a presentation to go to. largely of a sort of family affair. Okay. We have a photographer's award. This is one of the last ones that we've given out. And uh, Donald tells me, soap and slip. Thanks so much, Ron Stan, for the prizes. We won a thing. There was a photo competition and I entered some photos and we won it. But no sailing awards, but we no did win No sailing the photo awards, award. but we did win something. So, pretty stoked. <laughs> Surrounding the historic port of Hobart are quiet neighbourhoods that make you feel like you've just stepped into old England. With manicured gardens and old pubs that support the drinking habits of all generations of mariners which is where you'll find a quiet little drink. So we're at the Shipwright Arms Bar Hotel. It's a bit of a tradition here to come after the race for a small drink. Yeah. <laughs> It's a bit of a tradition to come. It's a bit of a tradition to come down here for a quiet little drink. 
Nothing about it sounds quiet. It looks like there's probably a lot of drinking going on there, but I think it's a bit of a piss take. I think it's going to be a big afternoon, and I'm, I'm very all about that. And I'm sure a lot of other people that have been stuck on boats for near a week are very all about a little quiet drink as well. The new year brings Hobart to life with three yacht races worth of boats arriving to town and the Taste of Tasmania Food Festival creating a vibrant atmosphere. With DJs you can't help but boogie to when you've conquered the daunting west coast of Tasmania. Happy New Year everyone, thanks for all of your support this year. Let's make this channel epic next year. And then we'll keep doing new adventures. Oh, we'll go back to our stuff up the east coast of Australia from here on out. This was just a little glitch in the matrix that is YouTube. Anyway, Happy New Year, thanks. Love you guys, thanks for making this possible. See you in a bit.